Beautiful souls, do you have a prayer request or want us to send you healing energy today? Would you like us to be praying for you, a friend, or a loved one? If this is you, go to worldlargestprayernetwork.com to submit your prayer requests. And while you're there, please join our team of prayer warriors. Your angels say that prayer not only opens you to miracles, raises your vibration, and helps you heal, but the more you pray, the more God's presence is felt here on earth. Feel your angels' love right here, right now, as they surround you, and be on the lookout for positive, loving messages that are meant specifically for you in today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host, Julie Jancis. And today we're here with Justine and she has three gorgeous, beautiful, yummy, delicious angel stories to share. And friends, if you're listening over on uh, the podcast, that is amazing. You can also, if you wanna see our faces, join us over on YouTube where they are, these are posted all the time um, so that you can see us as well. And a lot of people have said that that's really fun to like put a face with a name. So that's, that's fun as well. And two, if you have angel stories, we're looking for more, you can email them over to juliejancis at gmail.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here, Justine. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Julie. I'm so happy to be here. Yay. Okay. I'm going to have you take it away and share your three angel stories. Perfect. Um, so my first angel story, um, my grandmother passed away in November of 2019. Um, she was my absolute best friend, um, spent so much time with her, grew up so close to her. Um, she was sick for a while. So when she did pass away, it was almost, I was so happy for her to move on to that other side um, and felt so um, connected to her still. Um, just recently, I started a new full-time job and career um, of being a teacher. And my grandma was a teacher her whole life. It was her passion. She loved, loved, loved teaching. Um, at first, I had a tough time. I was like, did I make the right decision? Um, one night in particular, I was really just a little um, nervous, stressed going into this new job. Um, and I was having a hard time. I'd been on the phone with a few of my friends, um, having a really tough night. And I walked into Walgreens to pick up a few pictures I had ordered. And I get in, I get to the cashier, and there were ladybugs on the credit card machine. Um, and I really associate my grandmother with ladybugs. She's always made me feel like she is present with ladybugs. Um, and I said to the cashier, have you ever seen a ladybug in this store? And he's like, no, never. Um, so I just, I knew, I, I know you always say, I know, like, I know, like, I know that is my grandmother here to tell me that this is the right decision. This is the right career move. Um, and that she was here supporting me. So that was a time that I really felt so close to my grandmother um, and got that little visitation from her. Um, so that is my first story, just a cute little, she continues to visit me in Ladybugs, but that was my number one, like, oh my God, she's here with me right now. My next angel story, um, my father passed away when I was 23, about a year and a half ago. Um, very suddenly, um, I was with him, uh, me and my mother together. Um, and it was really hard. Our family was so close. Um, he was also like one of my best friends. I lived at home at the time, right after college. Um, it was during COVID. So we were spending a lot of time together. Uh, he was just amazing. Um, so the months after my father had passed, I really found myself longing for that connection, wanting some, wanting to feel him, feel his presence. And that's kind of what started my spiritual awakening. Um, so somehow I got um, involved in listening to Julie's podcast. Um, and that really filled that void for me. Um, I had tried so many things and was just so desperate to feel my dad with me. Um, so a little backstory here. I had, um, my parents' favorite place was um, Las Vegas. 
Um, they loved the nightlife. They loved the amazing hotels. They went at least once a year for 15 years. Um, I had been to Vegas with my parents twice, once when I was like 13 and my 21st birthday trip was with my parents, my family, and we went to Vegas. Um, so six months after my dad had passed, my cousins, my aunt and uncle and my two cousins were going on a cross country trip in an RV. Um, and we were all sitting there on Christmas and me and my brother and my two other cousins just decided to meet them in Albuquerque and jump in this RV with them and take a little trip. So we met them in Albuquerque. We drove to the Grand Canyon. And then our last stop was Las Vegas. Um, and it definitely was a little bittersweet being there without my father. It was the first time I'd been there without him. Um, but I did feel so connected to him there. Um, and my dad was such a lucky person as well. I sat down at a machine in the lobby of the hotel. I put a $20 bill in and somehow it was the crazy experience, craziest experience ever. I ended up winning $4,500, um, which is not normal on a slot machine. The whole event, it was like a three hour process. I just kept winning and winning and winning. Um, and me and my cousins and my brother and my aunt and uncle were just standing around like in awe. There were people clapping for me. Like it was the funniest thing ever. Um, and when I got home, everyone was like, Justine, that is your dad. Your dad helped you in that. Um, and at the time I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Um, fast forward a few months later, I was driving home from work one night and I was listening to Julie's podcast. Um, I was listening to an angel story, um, of someone else who had lost their father. And all of a sudden it was the craziest thing. I felt as though I had been transported back to Vegas. I was sitting at the Buffalo machine winning. I was watching it like win and win and win. And I could hear my dad in my heart saying, I really had to do all this to prove to you that it was me that helped you win that money. He's like, open up. It's me. I'm here with you. And again, like you say, I knew, like I knew, like I knew that was my father coming to me and telling me he was with me. Um, and then I like snapped back to reality almost. And I was driving home and I just felt so at peace and content. And finally, like I had made that connection that I had been longing for for so long. Um, and you always say like, it's not scary. It's not, I think in any other instance, I, you'd probably be like, what the heck? But I just felt this overwhelming sense of like joy and peace. Yeah. Um, so that really like jumped me into starting to really want to like learn more about this and follow you more closely, Julie. And I just really dived in. Um, that brings me to my next and last angel story. My mother and I have always felt pretty, um, in tune, I would say, um, my mom's intuition is incredible. She has known things and always had this very like aware sense. Um, yeah, just very, very intuitive, I would say. So I, this was a few months after that, um, visitation I had for my father. Um, I don't dream about him a lot. Um, my brother does dream about him a lot, um, but I do not. And I had a dream that we were, my dad was driving and I was in the back seat. It was extremely normal. Um, I almost had known that he had passed away, but it wasn't weird that we were together. Um, and we were just driving through my city and all of a sudden a large white tiger jumped into the back seat. And he turned around and he said to me, don't worry, he's not going to hurt you. Just be careful. Don't worry, Justine, you're safe. Don't worry. And I was just sitting in the back seat with this white tiger. It was so bizarre. I woke up, told my mom and my sister and my brother the whole story. And I'm like, it was the weirdest thing. Um, 
So right after my dad had passed, both of my siblings got into um, pretty serious relationships. Um, That's just kind of how it all worked out. And my sister's boyfriend had come over that night and he had gotten us um, these gifts just because. And so I open up the present that he had gotten us and it was a blue sweatshirt and I pull it out of the bag and the white tiger from my dream was on the front of the sweatshirt. And me and my mom looked at each other because I just told her the whole story. And I just was like, what in the world? And I don't know if you can shed more light on that a little bit later, Julie, but I still don't really understand the message, but it was incredible. I, I, I was just like, oh my goodness, this is, this can't be a coincidence. Um, just to answer the question of why he put a tiger on the sweatshirt. My dad was a huge hockey fan. My we're all hockey fans. Um, and the team in my city were called the ice cats. Um, and my sister's boyfriend, that was kind of his rendition of the ice cats. And he had put on the sweatshirt, your memory will live on forever. It was a really sweet gift, but yeah, just the, the coincidence, not the coincidence, I guess the, whole situation. I was just like, oh my goodness, this is really something. (laughs) I say so. That's incredible. So here's, here's what happens. Okay. And this is the message. This is why I love doing what I do. This is why I love this podcast is because this message has to get out within the world. The way, listen, you know how much your dad loved you. You know that when a loved one crosses over to the other side, that they don't want to leave. Your dad didn't want to go. No. And he needs with every ounce of his being to be able to connect with you, mom, brother, others. However, his hands are kind of tied by the fact that his communication cannot be the same anymore like it was when he was here if you were upset he could pull you close he could give you a huge hug he could kiss your head and tell you everything was going to be okay but we have made it up within society where we're just seeing i can't tell you how many people i talk to and work with who constantly question themselves am i making this up Julie, I have to be making this up. This can't possibly be true. How is it that we've pushed ourselves so far away from our intuition that that we don't believe it's real anymore, okay? And so the first step that a lot of loved ones take in connecting with us are these signs, are these symbols, are these, holy, wow, I just had this dream of this tiger and it shows up in this present. What happened there? If you are questioning within your mind, am I making this up? Dad, is this really you? Show me this is really you. This is how he comes into your consciousness to communicate with you and say, babe, this is really me. I'm really here. And not only that, Justine, but also so that in the future, when he really needs to get through to you, Justine, I need you to listen to me right here, right now. You don't question it because you know, this is what it sounds like when dad talks to me. This is what it feels like. And so he's able to get through to your consciousness to help you have hope, have faith, believe, so that next time when he shows up, it's a quicker communication of energy between you. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, I want to talk about a couple of different things. One of the things that the angels asked me to bring up, this isn't a message for you, but for everybody listening, it's mm-hmm. interesting because you came into this podcast episode and you're like, my dad was a lucky guy. Like he just always had so much luck. And in the last podcast episode, the guests actually said the exact opposite. They were talking about somebody uh-huh. and they said, this person was always unlucky. And I want everybody to hear this because um, it's January 2022, and I'm probably going to say this 20 times on the podcast this year, but every time it's so that you can feel it more deeply because it's important. 
friend, if the idea of connecting to your angels and changing your life using your very own spiritual gifts sounds amazing and is deeply resonating with you today, I want you to go on my website and check out my angel membership. Registration is open. Sign up today and you'll get access to new course content and events each week and a private community. Members love how everything you need for your spiritual awakening is all in one place. Sign up today, angel membership, it's incredibly healing. Also, the winner of this month's free reading with me is in the show notes below. Leave a five-star positive review of my podcast or book, and you could be next month's winner. Lastly, check out the upcoming events page on my website, theangelmedium.com, because we have a lot of upcoming events that I know you're going to be interested in. I want to phrase this like a parable, okay? So a scientist decides to study actual physical light. And what they find is that all light is waves. So the scientist does the study again to make sure the findings are correct and comes back and studies light again. And what they find is that the light isn't waves, it's particles, the smallest piece of physical matter. And so confused, the scientist goes back a third time to study light and finds that all light is waves until you put your attention on it. And as soon as you put your conscious awareness, presence, attention on energy, it becomes particles, which is the smallest building block of all physical reality, all matter, creation, manifestation. This is how it's coming to be. So how does a relationship with you and your loved one on the other side manifest, co-create, show up in reality? You have to be willing to put your attention on it, your conscious awareness on it. And going back to that lucky or unlucky thing, I had a girlfriend early on. She was um, one of my daughter's friends, moms, who I got really close with. Um, and she said, Julie, I just tell myself I'm a lucky person. Everything's going to work out for me. Everything always works out for me. And she's just so confident. I was like, what's there? She's taking waves. We all are artists, painters, right? With our own creation of our own lives. And she was taking the waves in front of her and molding them, putting her attention on them, creating what it was that she wanted. And she spoke words of faith into her life by being positive. And so I wanted everybody to hear that when you say, I'm not a lucky person, things don't work out for me. Something's always happening to me. What you're doing is taking the waves of your life and turning them into particles that you do not want. Don't do that. Don't say those things to yourself. Instead, say what Justine said earlier, right? My dad was a lucky guy. You know, I'm a lucky person. Um, speak words of faith into yourself speak words of faith into your loved ones, because I might not be able to physically show you how this works, but the science is starting to back this up. And what you're actually doing is taking these waves and turning them into the core of physical reality you're creating. And so I wanted people to hear that. Um, Justine, there was a couple of things that your dad had me write down. One of them is career. I'm not exactly sure what it is that you do right now in your career, but I feel like you have had him kind of put in your mind that you could have a business of your own one day, that you could see yourself as the face of it. I keep seeing you over on social media and it's just like, like your beautiful picture. It's just out <laughs> there. Um, and I don't like to like, bring through connotations that like, you know, bring through like the patriarchy and I'm not trying to do that, but your, your dad is just like my beautiful girl, right? Like he just like loves you so much. 
And what he was saying is to tie in what we were just talking about, you have to speak words of faith into yourself. I feel like this is an energy that has been with you of like, well, could I do this or could I not? Or it's not something new that I'm telling you. You've felt this before. Um, yeah. However, your dad says that you have this negative you know, voice within your head saying, I just don't know. I don't know about this. And he goes, that right there, that's your free will decision. You are choosing whether or not you're going to take those waves and create something out of it or not. And he said, only you have that power to do that. He said, I can't come in and do it for you. He said, but if you chose to go that direction and create something and listen, I didn't start my business by jumping out and completely just starting something from ground zero without having any other income coming in. I had a other, you know, part-time job where I worked yeah. in fundraising and then did this 20 hours a week at the beginning. He said, you could do something similar, but he said, I need you to hear from me. Not only could you do this, you could do it 110% and you will be very, very successful at it. But he said, you have to believe that. Does that make sense? Yes. So talk to us a lot of sense. All right, share. Like, Uh, (laughs) so I'm a teacher right now. Um, I love teaching. I just, it all kind of just fell into my lap. I, this is not what I went to school for. This is not, um, I don't know. This was never the plan, I guess. Um, my plan always was to collegiately choreograph and coach, um, dance teams. I'm a dancer. I've been a dancer my whole life. I'm assuming that's what my dad is talking about. Um, that has always been my goal. Um, yeah, I that is definitely what he's talking about. I I know it. Perfect. Um, I want to tell you this story because, and I don't even know the full story, so this is like hearsay through the community. But mm-hmm. he's sharing it with me to give it to you. There was, there is, um, a dance studio in town where I believe the woman ended up winning the lottery and started the dance studio based on that winning, which is random because you were just talking about winning in Vegas. And so he's showing me this story and not saying to go gamble or not promoting gambling in any way, shape or form. Um, But he said, picture yourself having a similar windfall and starting your own dance studio Mm -hmm. or business from it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And he said, and put pen to paper and figure out the plan. How do you do it? How do you even do it without the windfall, right? And just start taking action steps. And he said, as you start taking action steps, everything will fall into place exactly where it's supposed to be. Okay. Um, (laughs) I'm not going to tell you anything that you don't know here. Um, Your dad comes through with the clearest energy I've ever seen when it comes for your mom. She was his person through, and I mean, he loved that woman more than life itself. And she felt the same way towards him. Um, I really use, I don't use like the term twin flame or soulmate lightly. They're as close as you get to what that is. Um, She's really struggling right now, I feel like, with understanding the why. And what he just said is she's never going to have the why. And if she keeps focusing on, like, why is she here? Why does she have to be here without him? He said that energy and that thought is going to continue to hurt her heart. He said it would be better for her to, um, he said that she has so much purpose. She doesn't want to think about another person coming into her life. I'm not sure that she would ever get married again, but she has a lot of purpose in being here for you and her kids and her grandkids in the future. And you all need her immensely. And I know that she feels that, but your dad said that she needs to anchor into that on a deeper level. 
And then she also needs to anchor into life can really be fun. Like she has freedom to do a lot of different things that she just wants to do. And he said, I want her life to not just be lived here. Like I have to be here to support the family. It's I get to be here and I get to just spread this joy here on earth. And he said if she could just shift her perspective just a little bit, she'd feel so much better because I feel like the feeling of the why he just keeps showing me is so heavy on her and just so holding her back. Yeah, definitely. And I've definitely um, said that to her as well, like that shift in perspective. Yeah. I don't know if you guys did it already too, but I feel like this is both for your mom and you. Have you guys gotten the tattoo in memory of him? Um, I have a tattoo of him and my mom is getting one. Yeah. Oh, shut the front door. That's yeah. awesome. Cause I rarely ever mine. say that on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> this is my tattoo. It's a little Snoopy. Um, we always called my dad Snoopy. So oh my I have gosh. a Snoopy on my wrist. I love it. I love it. He knows he was with you. He's going to be with mom when she gets her tattoo. And the one thing that I want to leave you with too is I know you're in the angel membership and you have that relationship with him. Not just now, but the other thing that he just said is that sometimes one of your egoic mind thoughts is, but is that going to fade over time as time goes by? And am I still going to remember him as clearly? And he said, the answer to that is yes. Not only will you remember him, but you will always feel his energy and his presence at max capacity. Okay. And so when you have that egoic mind thought, I need you to kick it out by talking back to it and saying, nope, my dad is a freaking force to be reckoned with. And that man is coming like a freight train my entire life to be right next to me because that's his energy. It exactly is. Yes. (laughs) And that I, that was one of my more recent worries. Yeah. Is this like in 20 years, am I gonna still remember him the way he was? And that was, yeah, hit the nail right on the head there. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, Justine, he loves you so much. He said, he's going to help you build this business. You've got this. And um, remember, take action first and figure out all the pieces. Okay. One more thing. He just said, um, there's somebody in the family who's really good with business. I don't know if they have their own business as well. Um, But he said, go to them to understand the business mechanics and how the business needs to run and operate. He said, they'll help you with it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Everybody that's listening, thank you so much for being here. Justine, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Friends, we need more angel stories. So if you have those angel stories to share, please email them in to juliejancis at gmail.com. Follow me over on Instagram at Angel Podcast, where we go live, bringing you on there to bring through angel messages and just answer your questions. And, um, And yes, thank you so much for being here. I love you. They love you. Open up your heart to all of the unexpected blessings they're bringing through right now. Beautiful soul, thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Julie. You know I'm all about connecting you with messages from your angels and loved ones on the other side. If you've been listening today and you're super excited and just have to know which angels are sitting around you now, who's connecting with you, and how they're supporting you, go to theangelmedium.com. Register for a virtual session. You can do a reading with me or a member on my team. We're all incredible. We all talk to angels daily, and we can help you in making sure that your angels are doing the best they can to support you and guiding you to the life you want to live. Virtual sessions, they're only offered on my website, never, never, never offered on social media, only offered on theangelmedium.com. Sign up today. 
And if you're the person who's really excited, you're ready to go all in developing your unique spiritual gifts, growing your intuition, starting your own healing business, you can sign up for my Angel Reiki School to become a certified angel messenger. That's for the healers among us who feel called to grow their intuition to the max and serve humanity with their gifts. You'll learn energy healing, mediumship, how to deliver angel messages, and business mastery skills. That's the Angel Reiki School. You can find more information on theangelmedium.com or DM me over on Instagram at Angel Podcast with any questions you have. Friends, before you go, connect with your angels by placing your hand on your heart, taking a deep breath. Imagine a doorway filled with God's unconditional love in front of you. I want you to step into that love in front of you. And I want you to feel it as it fills your body, your chakras, and your auric field. Now ask your angels, what would you have me know today? And open yourself to the positive, loving messages they have just for you.